What's up guys, Ian Sandusky from Lakewood Machine and Tool back here again for Practical Machinists. And today on a very special episode of Making the Cut, I'm here at Walter HQ in Tübingen, Germany. We're gonna be checking out their technology center, we're gonna be checking out their campus, and we're even gonna see how some tools are made. But first, I'm joined by my friend, John Jansen. You definitely remember if you've seen any of the Making the Cuts episodes before, he manages the Waukesha Tech Center, which has recently moved to South Carolina. That's correct. John, thank you very much for joining us. Ian, you made it. Welcome. Thank you very much. Why don't we go take a peek at this place? Sure, let's check it out. So I've shown you the US Tech Center. Allow me to take you inside and show you Germany's. Let's go take a peek. John, where are we right now? We're inside the uh, tech center itself, right? As uh, we come into the foyer here, we got uh, some literature on display, but no one really looks through magazines anymore. How about we look through some of the latest technology instead? Let's check it out. So this is the tech center. It is. And of course, you can imagine we use this room to show off our tools, right? We make some of the latest, greatest innovations. We want to show that to everyone all around the globe. Right? Show off the tools is one thing, but what our customers are probably most impressed with is what we can do for them. Perhaps it's training that they need. Here we are on the ground floor. We have three more levels above us here at this technology center, uh, complete with collaboration rooms, uh, programming, uh, an entire banquet hall if need be, right? So that's one part of it. You come to the tech center, bring your work piece as well. So if you have a component that maybe you're having issues with chip control or surface finishes or just tool life itself, you can bring that part here and we'll prove it out for you using our tools and finding the most efficient parameters for your equipment. Why don't you kind of walk me through how that happened? Just like your, uh, your shop, I'm sure you start off with selecting the tools. Absolutely. Here we have a vending machine. Right? Tool management, being able to come to the machine, scan in, take out the needed inserts, the drills, the threading tools, what have you, pull that out, the machine's gonna keep track of now your inventory. It's one less thing you or your employees need to do. Absolutely. From there, we'll take the tool, we'll come into our tool crib, where we now can select a, a holder for it. From there, wow, we'll take the holder, and depending on if you're using an ER collet, a shrink fit, for instance, maybe a hydraulic power grip, any of these, we can accommodate how you're gonna hold it. So this is where you guys put in all the pull studs and stuff in this little section here? Yeah, coolant transfer nozzles, put the inserts on, get the tool ready for the next step. Which is? Well, if we're gonna exploit 30,000 RPM capability that this facility has, probably gonna wanna balance that tool. You can't take a tool, slap it in a holder, call it good and spin it at 30,000 RPM. Bad things happen, you're gonna get chatter. This will really help eliminate that. Right. So after that, we have one more step before we put that into the machine. Over here, we're gonna preset it. We're gonna get the heights, the diameters, all that information, and then transfer it right out to the machine tool. And that will go direct? Yeah, yep. And what's the first machine you're gonna help us with? Well, the first one on tour here, we have our DMC-80H. This is a HSK-63. It's fitted with MQL. With that 30,000 RPM, you can imagine we want to exploit everything we can do in aluminum. Oh, absolutely. Right. So whether it's deep pockets, thin walls, any of these generic components you can see here, we can demonstrate and show what we can do, if not on your own component, on some something like. I don't know if you guys can see that, but that's probably one eighth wall thickness there and hogged all out, and that was done on a machine, either this one or a machine like it. Absolutely, not only just the machine, we also had the strategy, the, the tooling techniques and how to enter a cut to ensure that you're not gonna have deflection, you're gonna get the surface finish you demand. And if you can do something like that, I'm sure you can do a whole lot more. Absolutely. Moving on here, what are some other stuff we have here? I see a giant machine here that I have not seen before. Yeah, the BW MCC 800, this thing's a beast. Pallet changer equipped on here, HSK 100. You're looking at about 56 horsepower on this thing. Wow. And, and speaking of uh, the machines themselves, it's about every four years that a machine will sit here on the floor, then we'll upgrade to the latest and greatest technology, wow. even more dynamic machines as machining evolves, which is uh, in our case quite often, right? 
we want to have the latest and greatest on here. And what do we have here? I've seen this uh, around here. Now there's a big mill here, but there's also a weird system attached to it. What's that? Just like over on our DMC, we have an MQL system on here. This machine, the Hermley uh, is it a C52U, is probably a more common machine that we would see in you know, smaller to medium range shops. And we want to have that same uh, capacity to mimic what you're doing on your machines so we can prove it out here in front of you. And now this is a giant, I, I, I suppose it's a military because I can read it. But <laughs> I don't know what gave it what away. What is Ian. this? <laughs> here we have our WFL. It's a twin spindle machine. So lights out operation again. We can put in a component, do everything that we need to do on one side of the chucking, transfer it on over to the other side and do the same, uh, finish uh, the opposite side. No time spent loading, unloading that part more than you have to. It's fitted with a C6 adaption on there for the milling. So we're able to plug in just any kind of robust adapters that we have there as well. And it's really interesting, especially as I've seen some of the new tooling coming out, you really do like, this is not just a place where it's, this isn't a showroom. This is where when they're developing these tools and testing them out, something that's brand new from Walter may be going in that thing for the first time to run ever. That's correct. A new insert profile, a new whatever. Like this is where this stuff actually gets developed, tested out, not only for customers, but for Walter. Sure, our R&D department uh, innovates that tool. Then we bring it out here and we can really do some prolonged testing. And what's this we have over here? Obviously it's a DMG, but. Sure, our NLX 3000, 3000 RPM on the spindle there, we're able to really measure the type of wear that we're getting on a tool, something that's a very stable machine and, and allows us to, again, look right into the whole process of finishing things up. Right? So now we've done the test cut. We went ahead and measured, uh, we, we gained chip control. We got your surface finish. What does that insert actually look like at the end of that process? Here, high definition uh, uh, picture taken through our magnet, or through our uh, microscope here, we're able to really see what kind of wear is going on, see if we're going about the, the, the process in the best way. Well, because you need to know that too, because you can just look at an insert and be like, that thing looks fine, and it could have micro cracks for the entire thing. Right. So you do kind of need to be able to document for your customers the kind of performance you're getting of out of it. Of course, and at the end of this whole process, that documentation can come into a report uh, as exact as it needs to be for what you were looking to get out of it. So that report's delivered with this high definition uh, photography that we have here. So by the time it's done, you know exactly what you're getting, you know what the performance is gonna be, you know the process is gonna work. It kinda takes a lot of the guesswork out of the, for the customers that utilize this kind of service. Absolutely, and those customers no longer have to spend time with a machine testing on their own floor, trying to gather that data. What if we try that? What if we try that? What if you just come to Walter? Quite true. So John, now that you've given us a tour, and thank you very much for that, what's the next thing we should check out here on the Walter campus? Well, what we talked about here was pretty much the end process. We gave you all of that information. We, we helped you with any kind of issues that you had. I think you probably should go see where all of this starts, where that innovation is developed at our R&D department that we pointed out on the way in. This place is huge. Do you mind kind of showing me where that is? <laughs> yeah, come on. So John told us we had to come over and check out the R&D Test Center. I've managed to find it on this giant campus and now I'm joined by Marcus. Marcus, thanks for joining us today. Hi Ian, nice to meet you. And what Hi. do you do here at Walter? I'm the responsible R&D manager for indexable turning tools and grooving. And I would like to visit with Ian today our R&D center. This is your domain right behind us. Right, let's go in. Let's go take a peek. So Marcus, why don't you tell us a little bit about this place? Yes, this is our R&D Test Center. Um, where we produce uh, the first prototype samples uh, for soft tools. So what we are doing here, we are producing prototypes for milling, drilling, turning and grooving tools. And what we do here is also we have a, a measuring room where we do the most of our analytics there. And we have this prototype area and we have also down there um, a possibility to test um, our prototype tools. So what are we looking at here? I'm seeing a Hermle. This is a, obviously a nice mill. Is that a five axis? Yes, that's right. That's a five axis machine. It's a brand new machine. And uh, we see Reiner here. Reiner is doing actually um, a helical cutter. And this is what I've uh, mentioned before from the idea from to the 3D model right here in place. See, this is crazy because obviously I've seen these in their finished state. You know, these are the big, high, what do you call them? Uh, porcupine cutters as well. That's porcupine, yeah. But I didn't realize that you guys actually 
CNC machine these in-house as a prototype. I guess, of course, that must be how you do it. Yes. But the level of detail in these things with the coolant holes, with all the tapped holes on angles, there's a lot of work that goes into something like yes, this. Yes, I agree. And this is the complete tool which will be done here uh, completely. And what we have here as well, we can also test it directly here in our machining center. <laughs> Perfect. Now we got another small mill here behind me, I see. Yep. And then what are we looking at in this kind of area of the, of the shop? Yes, this is the prototype area, as I mentioned. Um, then, yeah, we are working here on different stuff. Example, uh, drilling tools, milling tools, grooving indexable tools, and also turning tools, and uh, a lot of specials as well. Look at the size of some of these tools in here. I mean, these are obviously some first offs, these are some tests, these are things you guys are testing. I don't know if I've ever seen a U-drill that big. Yes, this is um, yeah, a typical indexable drill. Now, do you, do, would you run a comparison test so you make a new body, see how your old tool performs, yeah. and then directly compare it with your new tool? Exactly, you're right. So we will do and perform also reference tests. So we will see where are the weaknesses on, on those tools, and I hope we can improve it yeah, with the next um, product family, of course. And I got to ask, do you guys ever just straight up torture test tools in here and run them until they blow? Yes, of course. <laughs> that sounds like the funnest job in the world. Yeah, that's our job. Now I do see behind me here, obviously we are in a German company. You guys tend to like DMG Mori here. Tell me about what we're looking at here. Yes, the machine here, what we can see here is a machining center. And we will see a face milling cutter over there. Look at the size of this thing. We are standing in front of our DMC 1850V. And this is testing our coatings. Uh, we have a huge block in there. Now, what kind of body, like, I don't recognize that holder. I haven't seen that. I see this here. This is not a typical cutter head. It used to be a very typical one. It's an uh, old F2010. And I guess the whole point is, since you're running one insert at a time, yes. you don't need to get a body for that cutter. You can literally just make that little cartridge, pop yes. it in there, and away you go. Yes. Now, and why are you running one at a time as opposed to running a full head of inserts? Because we would need too much material. It would be very cost expensive, uh, expensive and we would have too much chips. Now, how many blocks like that would you go through in a week? Uh, so we can do up to one block per day. A full block of yes. that turned into chips with, every day. With one tooth. <laughs> so. Wow. So, Ian, um, here we are in the turning area, and we have a really strong and rigid Böhringer machine where we are doing really tough tests. Uh, we have prepared today a, a flaking test, as we can see here. And what we are doing here is we will do a turning test and we will turn a square shank component round. Why we do that? Can you? Do you I'm know? guessing because you're trying to torture that insert, that poor, poor insert, as much as you possibly can. Yeah. So are you going to get to see it? You will see it. Oh, I'm nervous. Oh. What's our depth of gut there? How deep are we going? Millimeters. Woo! Nice and sparky. And after that, we have uh, a kind of edge line uh, damage, of course, yeah, right. of the edge line. And this is what we what we would like to see. And what we count is the number of passes, yeah. And Until if, that flaky yes, is introduced, yes, right? Yes, yes, yes. And what do we have going on behind us here in this? Again, DMG Mori. <laughs> this is our next station, and um, we are performing here a kind of chip control test. Um, why we do that? Because we will achieve a maximum application area, apl application window for our customers, for our operators. And Armin, he would like to demonstrate now the, the chip control test on a high carbon steel. So that's just going to cut and back and yes. cut and back. That's, this is a typical longitudinal turning test. Uh, we will start from this Woo. and we will go in this direction. How many, how many hours would this thing run? Would this run all day? Ah, uh, yes, we can do it. Um, normally, we, we will stop at three minutes. Then we will measure the wear and see what's going on on the rake face. And then we will continue this test again for another three minutes. And so, so it's one. in three minute increments. Yes, until two life end. Well, thank you very much for showing us around. Thank you. We're going to head back to the tech center and check out a few demos over there. Please enjoy. Have thank a nice day. Much. Bye. 
Now I've got someone special for you guys. I'd like to introduce you to my friend Jasmine. Jasmine, thank you for joining us today. Hi, Ian. And what's your role here at Walter Tools? I'm product manager for Milling and Expo Tools. So you are the right person to ask these questions to then. As you know, I got some of these ExtraTech XT milling cutters sent my way in the mystery box. And I like them, I love using them. I think they're very versatile, but I kind of struggle as to know when to use those over something like an M4000 or a Walter Blacks. Can you kind of help me out with that a little bit? Yeah, ExtraTech XT means process reliability. Right. And for example, here you see our three different face milling cutters with three different approach angles, but all using the same insert. And you can also see these little shims here, which are for more process reliability because sometimes it occurs that your insert breaks during the machine process. And then it's not that good when the tool body gets in hurt. Definitely, you can ding, ding yeah. out your pockets, that that insert won't sit flat against the back anymore. Yes, yes. That helps prevent that. That helps prevent that. How does that do that? Because it's a carbide, carbide chim. So oh, it's a carbide yeah, chim as well. Yeah, it's carbide, yeah. Now, one thing I can see about these, and I could be wrong, is this what we're calling a negative insert? Yes, it is. So that means that not only do you have that cutting insert uh, face on one side, the back of that insert is also another cutting yes, face. Yes, yes. We do not say negative, we say double-sided. Because double -sided. negative sounds so negative. And so we say double-sided inserts, so it has cutting edges on both sides. So we have four cutting edges on the one side and then you can just rotate it and then you have, again, four cutting edges. So in total, this insert has eight cutting edges. <laughs> now, one thing I saw in here that I thought was really interesting is this mill finish here. I'm gonna try to yes. get my fingerprints off it, but that's a very nice finish. And I'm yes. guessing it was something like this. And I didn't know they made these. This is an insertable ball nose. Yes, it is. Yeah. Wow. So we have, um, the insert is um, periphery ground, so you have a very precise cutting edge. Yeah, this is a smaller version, yes. And yeah, it is our finishing cutter for indexable inserts. Now Jasmine, when we talk about Walter, one thing that comes up all the time and you're known for it is Tiger Tech Gold. When we talk about Tiger Tech Gold, it's a coating, but what are we talking about? Yeah, Tiger Tech Gold is our newest coating generation. Um, we have five different Tiger Tech Gold grades, um, three for SPVD coatings and two SCVD coatings. And you can use it on all materials, so ISO PK, MS, but not on ISO H. Coding. When we're talking PVD and CVD, yeah. what's the difference? Because I hear those, but I don't really understand what it means. So CVD means chemical vapor deposition, and PVD is physical vapor deposition. Yeah, in the, in the CVD coating process, the coating is deposited on the insert um, in a very high temperature and very high time, long time. Right. And because of that, the coating is thick, but because of the high temperature, it's very brittle. Right. So CVD grades are high performance grades, but you can only use them when you have stable processes. Yeah. yeah. And the PVD coating, they are deposited on the insert in lower temperature, so half the temperature than for the CVD coating, and lower time. For this reason, the coating is... It's very thin then. Very thin, yes, but it's tougher. Right. Because it's not, yeah, it was not that high temperature in the coating process, so the coating is tougher. So you can also use it for instable processes. So for example, handle. vibration, right. yeah, or wet machining as well. Chatter isn't gonna be as much of an issue yes. if you can't hold something in support. Yes. So John, when we took the tour, I saw the ExtraTech XT line set up inside this machine. Yeah. Now, you and I have gone back and forth on this a little bit. You guys sent me up that great big box, mystery box of tools. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I've been trying to run some of that stuff and I was getting some problems and, you know, it just kind of demonstrated that no matter how good the tool is, if you're not taking the right approach, you're going to get yourself in trouble. You're not going to get the tool life. You're not going to get the productivity. And my problem was I wasn't pushing some of those tools hard enough. Yeah, and that's certainly the case more commonly than people would like to admit. It's usually turn it down a little bit, right? So let's take a look at this demo. Do you mind if we watch? So one of the things is the approach. Should we go just straight across, easy to program, do the 75% tool engagement? Right. But what we notice if we listen, as we come, again, on the cut, off the cut, we've been through this before. You get different sounds, different engagement. And essentially, we're dealing with that same issue of thermal shock. Cutter's heating up, cutter's cooling down. Right. Cutter's heating up, 
Cutter's cooling now. Extra tack XT. What's notice? Uh, what we need to note here is the approach angle. It's 45 degrees, so we have chip thinning going on, thinning out the chip, as opposed to a 90 degree shoulder. So here we. Now we're gonna do this approach where we actually roll onto the cut, stay engaged, and, and we'll listen to how well that sounds and how good the inserts would look afterwards then. Alex? Right off the bat, you can hear it sounds so much better. Far more consistent, you've got constant fluid engagement. You're not letting that carbide shock itself constantly. All right. It's actually taking more material out faster to yeah. boot. And if you didn't use this approach, what kind of bolts would you have if you use an on and off approach? Uh, thermal shock. Uh, as a machine shop owner, you'd, you'd have low productivity. Your money's going out the window. Right, exactly. I'm wasting money on inserts. I'm not getting the most out of it. Makes sense. We're gonna actually show a comparison between the anti-vibration, our Accutech system, and just a modular system. This so. is just a traditional extension. Extension. Well, the amount of length that has in that, it's starting to hear a bit of vibration, starting to hear a bit of chatter, but not too bad at that speed. for the Accutex system. Let's have a listen to this. Night and day. Check out the high feed mill now. This is the M5008. Wow, that thing's ripping. So this is the short version of that M5008. That's right. Without the D-Vibe holder. How many inches per minute are we seeing there? Uh, there were roughly around 350. And that's a fairly deep cut for a high feed mill. Gee. Just chewing through it, not slowing down whatsoever again. No, no cooling. No cooling. That's a mistake that I make too often as I run my high feed mills with coolant. I get yelled at every single time, but it's actually more efficient to let the heat build up in the chip and kick it off. That's where it's supposed to go, absolutely. The tool we're looking at now is the shoulder mill, it's the M5130. Now these are amazing. I've been using these in my shop ever since you sent me that, uh, that box. These things can absolutely eat. What we're gonna do actually is we're gonna go ahead and run this, and then we'll go ahead and load up a different insert with that wiper geometry on it. Now this is crazy. I was taking the same kind of cut with this. We did, I think, 400 thou depth of, or 400 thou depth of cut, 100 thou step over. And it looks like you're going even farther than that. And for what is essentially, most people are gonna use this as a roughing tool path. That is a fantastic finish. Not so bad. That's one pass so far. So this is that same cutter with a different insert inside. Yep. That is a hefty, hefty cut. Again, 4140 free hard. This is not aluminum and no. that thing is plunging straight in. So again, there's different grades, different wipers, different geometries, all for the same cutter body. You got one cutter body, a lot of different options you can use with it. That's right, one of the most versatile. So what Alex is doing right now is putting it in a wiper insert. That finish that we have on there, it's pretty good. But we can improve this uh, to a very great extent, I assure you. We're gonna do the other side of that with that wiper. That's right. And you can see for a finishing operation in 4140, that is a pretty decent feed rate. You do need to be very conservative when you're facing when you want good finishes. So let's have a look at that finish that was produced with the wiper. That is incredibly smooth. Not a lot of heat left in that block either, which shouldn't is be. 
quite crazy considering the operations you've been running on. Now, if I'm not incorrect, that's a high feed mill. It is a high feed mill. Let's throw a point so you can see what happens on this long hangout here and what affects a 90 degree high feed mill uh, does for your wall surface. Don't know, when you're hanging a tool out that far, wall finish, if you're not using a Divi bar, you know, something like this, right. is incredibly difficult to get. That tool length is so long, there's so much potential for chatter, but if you're using the right insert, the right tooling, and the right holder, it's a little bit different. Well Now this is called, if I'm reading it correctly, Ziltec. Ziltec. What makes correct. a Ziltec a Ziltec? Um, Ziltec is actually one of our first end mills that was designed from the beginning as a universal end mill. So we're gonna have one series of mills that's gonna be able to cover multiple materials and do multiple different operations. So basically, you guys created an all-around workhorse that someone can use for multiple materials. You know, I see five flute here, I see another five flute, we got three flute. That's something that I would consider, like you said, a aluminum style with a high helix. Exactly. Um, we actually have anything from two flute all the way up to eight flute. Um, so the eight flutes are really good for dynamic milling. Um, and the, some of the two flutes, again, and three flutes, like you said, for aluminum. And what um, kind of sizes are we talking about here? Well, they normally start at about a two millimeter range and we'll run all the way up to a 20 millimeter oh, diameter. Wow. Um, but not only that, we have different lengths. Anything from one times D, all the way up to even five times D and longer. So walk me through what a work piece like this is, get, how that's gonna be done by these Ziltex. Well, there's a lot of different things that on this part that you see have been machined. Um, as an example, we, we just started here on this letter P. We took a very small two millimeter end mill, we ramped down into the material, we came back out, and then we started doing full slotting with it. So um, that, uh, the ramping angle on that into this, this is 32 Rockwell steel. Hard so stuff. Yeah, it's pretty nasty. So after that, we came back and we brought in a little bit larger diameter end mill, um, a little shorter, and we came in and we did some full slotting all the way down and around the outside of here. Um, that's a pretty tough operation. Um, and the after, and with what we were doing, we were just running it with an air blast. Right. So You're not running good. even MQL on this. You're running no. it dry. You got it. Uh, next up, we did a couple of uh, machining operations around the side of the part. Uh, we came in here and basically dynamic milling. Some nice long end mills, uh, many flutes, very thin cuts, but nice and quick. And if you notice, we're doing this full depth, one pass, and look at the finish on there. And it's pretty, that's nice looking it stuff. Is. And no vibrations either. Not at all, and you're getting full flute engagement, you can see a nice even finish on there. Exactly. Um, here we did some uh, tricoidal milling, and we came in on the side. So we actually were ramping in like we would with a pocket, and coming straight in and doing a, a nice cutout inside. And you can see right in that corner, you're not seeing any chatter. That's the kind of spot where you would typically see in the inside of that rad, you'd see that cutter bounce if it was had any kind of deflection exactly. in it whatsoever. Exactly, that's where you'd hear your typical squawk. Absolutely. We've all heard that, yeah. Um, on the bottom here, we did some uh, full tricoidal slotting right across there. Um, nice heavy cut straight across. Yeah, you can see the tool marks right in the bottom there, but there's not. that's not actually chatter, that's just the the milling lines. It's the yeah. milling lines of how that looks, but you can see where each pass went. That's pretty interesting. Exactly. So, and then here we just did some full slotting, just came in full width of it. So we could do a tricoidal slot or we could just hammer straight in there and- Go and essentially bury the tool. You got it. Not only that, we have a hole here in the front. We milled that. We just came in here with one of our mills and we just did a helical milling operation. A helix ramp operation. And just went straight down into it. Jeez, and you can see the inside of that hole is actually a very, fine finish considering it, I don't think there was a finish pass on that. No, there was not. Now, you guys have some things you're gonna show us today and I believe we're gonna be joined by our friend Toby over here. Toby, thank you very much for joining us. This is gonna be a turning demo inside the NLX 3000 from DMG Mori. Yep. That's quite the machine. And it looks like we have a camera inside the machine so when we do this, you're gonna to get to see this entire thing live. So what are we looking at today, guys? Well, we are looking at a bunch of operations that mimic a lot of features that typical automotive components have in steel. And we're going to turn a very interrupted cut, a solid round bar, and we're going to take it and put it into a very sophisticated contours, features, internal boring. So it kind of has all the operations. So it kind of shows a lot of really good capabilities that we have. And Gerd, you did tell me before we started that this demo scares people. Yes, sometimes, because you will see on the workpiece, um, 
So this is the, the workpiece, it's pre-machined, so we have some holes on it um, to, to show a heavy interrupted cut. And you will feel it even on the floor later on. We first will machine here the skin on the workpiece. Uh, depth of cut, five millimeters, seven, and we will go up to nine millimeters. I'm very excited to see this. Shall we get going? Woo, what kind of depth of cut are we looking at right there? So this is five millimeters, uh, feet right, 0.7. And this is now continuous cut. And now with the second pass, you will hear a little difference. Oh, you're going to feel it. You're going to feel it on your feet. Wow. You can literally feel the floor vibrating right now. And now I believe we're going to go through even more of that interrupted cut. What we do now, we will run now a, a double-sided insert to show you even higher depths of cut. Yeah, and the obvious uh, advantage of double-sided insert is you get twice as many cutting edges. The advantage of a single-sided SNMM a negative is you got a very firm base, a very good support, so it can take very heavy duty. So this is now seven millimeters? Yeah. Wow. Not only is that not breaking, that is actually a very nice finish for a roughing pass. What are we going to see here next, guys? Well, next one is uh, coming up with uh, copy turning, right? Now, before we start, what is copy turning? Um, so copy turning, we understand you machine undercuts. Uh, very often, copy turn is also the finishing pass. So when you have to do a profile, you know, after before you machine the thread, you need to finish an undercut. Uh, copy turning if you have to machine a spherical, a ball or, or a ball joint. Um, so wherever you find uh, not straight linear turning, that's what we consider uh, yeah. copy turning. Yeah. That's cool. really more of a profiling for uh, American market. Right, yes. Yeah. Start the copy turning. Uh, we have now a DNMG. And why we want to show you the MU5, what is the most common depth of cut in turning? What would you say? I would say 20 to 30 thou. Yeah, okay, it's around two, three, four millimeters, yeah. correct, in this range. And therefore, we have developed uh, the MU5, and we will show you now a cut from zero up to 3.5 millimeter and down. Because there, you need a quite universal insert, high tool life, and also good chip control, and that's what we'll see next. No problem at all. Oh, yeah. Now we are up for the copy turner. Yeah. Now we're seeing that copy turner come in. And now we will see uh, the internal machining operations. So for a minimum diameter of um, 18 millimeters in this case. And there we machine even inside the undercut up to 50 degrees. Wow, that is a crazy profile to do inside. I don't know if you saw that, but that thing shimmied way over. Uh, so we were machining in both directions, forward, backward, to get the chips better out. And now we do the, the last the finishing cut. They're not wasting any time with retracts. It's all just staying inside yeah. the cut there. Here a finished component. You see it's, it's quite far inside. I don't know if you see it here. And there you see the, the undercut, the profile, what we just machined. And that is an extremely difficult thing to do when we're talking turning, especially yeah. with accuracy and repeatability. Uh, next one is now the BCMT the, insert. Yeah, the outside what, one. What we want to show you is um, the MU5 was the universal insert for outside. And you for universal, now we want to show you uh, uh, the MP4 and machine this ball, the spherical on the component. Also here you have a lot of different angles, so it's also quite difficult to um, break the chip. Absolutely. Yep. Therefore, let's see how these things work. You're seeing a really nice finish off that right away. Again, nice blue chips. Right. That's it. Fast That's operation. it for that one. That's quick. That was quick. Yep. 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 And now we come to the uh, copy the profile, turn system. Yeah. Yeah. So this is also a copy turn system. That's taking a very hefty cut for what looks like a very small insert tip. And now you see we go uh, to the chuck. Yeah. Then he plunges in and now we go away from the chuck. No problem. And it's actually distributing the wear over the entire exactly. set of that insert. Yep. So you're not just burning out the one side, right? Again, not wasting any time with retracts. Look at that finish. Yep. 
Yeah. That's very impressive. So now we're gonna see that exact same body with that different insert. And what's it gonna do? Leave a little machine out the face. Very, very fine point of contact there. Uh That is a very, very nice finish as well. So you would use this in place of a finisher, but also it's more versatile. Like I really fail to see the downside of these tools. Yep. Um, yeah, it's, I think there are not too many downsides. Sometimes you could be a constraint maybe with the excess, but most of the work pieces, you know, undercuts are very often only one, two millimeters. Or something. Right. So that's it. Now this tool I was talking to Sarang about earlier, this I believe is your grooving tool that's coming in next. That's right, that's the MX system with multiple points. It's got four different cutting edges. So if you break one of them, uh, you still have another three left. And it has a very good support system. So here's a, here's a look at the holder there. And we have a very unique support system, which is very horizontal. So all the cutting forces are taken up by a lot of competitors have uh, support on the diagonal side right. where it kind of eventually introduces a play to the insert. So we have very secure base and uh, in the radial direction there's only a very preci high precision pin that's supporting it. So it's a very nice system. If there is a tool breakage, it cleans one edge off but you still have the three intact. Great uh, coolant system on the uh, clearance as well as a uh, rate face amazing chip uh, chip evacuation so it's actually profiling with that as well it's not just plunging it's plunging and it's finishing the outer profile of that next one we are going to go in is actually and one of the challenges with actual turning is even if it looks like it's just a three millimeter like a hundred and point one one eight inch uh, width insert the OD on the outside side has a lot faster speed compared yes. to the inside side. And so we're gonna see this thing do that on this right now. That's right, that's right, that's coming up. Oof. There you go. That is a very, very strong cut. Again, it looks like it's doing that. It's not just a straight plunge, it's actually finishing those edges as well. And last but not least, uh, we will show you a popping off tool. Yeah, that was an incredibly fast part off. And now yeah. we can actually see that part. I just want to take a look at this groove oh, yeah. that you guys put in here. That is a very, very serious groove and a very, very nice finish on top of that. So there you have it, guys. Thank you very much to the team at Walter for having us. We got to check out some amazing things in that tech center, in the R&D center. We got to see some crazy demos. This place is amazing. The city is amazing. I highly recommend if you ever get a chance to come to this part of Germany, please do. Again, make sure you check out all the videos from this series because the next one coming, we're gonna be going to some other Walter locations to check out the actual production of how they make these tools. Until then, make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on notifications below to make sure you never miss a video. Thank you very much for watching, guys. You take care.